started losing my hair at the young age of 17. And if I didn't do the things I'm about to tell you in this video, I would have permanent and unrecoverable hair loss for the rest of my life. And if you don't think you're a part of this, 50% of men by age 50 experience some sort of hair loss. 40% of women experience some sort of hair thinning. So this video can genuinely help everyone, especially those who had it like me who really could not afford to lose their hair. In this video, I'm going to tell you my story about how I recovered my hair loss, then give you a step-by-step -step process on how to reverse hair loss, or if you don't have hair loss already, I'm going to teach you how to prevent it. I was born with very fine, thin, and straight hair. I always knew it was pretty thin, and this was always an insecurity of mine. Something that I really didn't like is that I could see gaps in my hair whenever my hair got wet. But naturally, as I got older, of course I looked into balding because I thought I was balding way younger than 17. This was just my emotions getting to me and being self-conscious about the fact that my hair was so thin. Until I actually hit the age 16, I noticed some sort of hair thinning in the corners of my head. And when I tell you, I no joke would stay up at night thinking about how bad this is, how much confidence I would lose if I knew that I would have to lose my hair. Trust me when I tell you I did my research and I know more than almost anyone on this topic. And luckily, it worked. So at age 17, especially later into the year, I noticed that I needed to do something about it. This is about as bad as it was. My hair got wet and I pulled it back. I literally looked like a 40-year-old man with how receded my hairline was. Then after using the tactics I'm about to go over, I made a full recovery and honestly, I feel like I gained some hair in only about five months time. Because I was young, I thought it would be pretty embarrassing to buy any sort of hair care products. So what I did is I started giving myself nightly scalp massages, not knowing if this would make any difference at all. That being said, there are now studies that have come out showing that this actually works, at least to some extent. The way this works is by bringing blood flow to the scalp. And you might be wondering how that has anything to do with hair loss. When blood is not reaching the end of your scalp, your hair follicle begins to shrink. So basically what this is doing is almost like watering a plant in a way. Even though it has very slight effects, it definitely made a very slight difference for me. It's a great place to start considering the fact that you don't have to buy anything and you can test your results. One thing I recommend for all of the steps I'm about to give you is taking progress pictures. You need to go to a place where you can find very consistent lighting, say your bathroom, and take a picture under the same lighting in the same spot every single day, or at least once a week. This is going to track your progress and really show what works for you specifically. But anyway, after doing this for a while, I noticed it was not working enough for me and it almost made no difference. So there are many different techniques that increase blood flow to your scalp, but specifically dermapuncture is one of the best methods. And you can do this by using one of three products, which I will link in the description of this video. Number one is a derma roller. Number two is a derma stamp. And number three is a micro needler. Basically, all three of these things do the same thing in a sort of different way. The derma roller is pretty obvious. You roll it against your scalp and it pokes tiny little holes in your scalp, increasing the blood flow. A derma stamp is very similar to a derma roller, but rather than rolling it, you stamp it into your head pretty obviously. And then a micro needler is the most expensive one because it's electrically powered. For me, I think the best one is a derma stamp because it's the most precise. You can take it very slow and accurately. To use a derma stamp properly, all you do is pull your hair back and stamp it into your scalp. This will increase the blood flow like I mentioned previously, and scientific studies have shown that this leaves long-term effects even if you stop doing it. So this is not one of those things you have to use for the rest of your life if you don't want to, because like I said, the effects last long-term without continuously doing it. Just make sure that before and after using any of these gadgets that you clean it off with rubbing alcohol. This is going to sterilize it the same way that doctors sterilize their needles because the last thing you want is bacteria entering your skin via needle that will give you an infection anyway after using this i definitely saw some effects but that would mean nothing without step number because what I'm about to tell you in step number three had the greatest effect on my hair out of all of these things so far. And this is minoxidil. Minoxidil is a liquid solution that you put on your scalp and it basically turns those little peach fuzz hairs that are inactive into actual dark thick hairs. When I started using this, I saw almost instantaneous results. This, you basically put it on your scalp twice a day and it's either a liquid or foam solution. If you're a young teenager, I don't necessarily recommend using this because it says on the packaging that it's not recommended. But honestly, that's totally your choice. Like I said, during my progress pictures, I noticed the most quick difference using this rather than everything else. This is what took me from feeling like I was basically balding to now having even more hair than when I started. Now, this was so effective that I literally started growing hair in a trail from my eyebrow to my scalp. Because when you apply the solution, it basically drips on your face. But yeah, it drips on your face and anywhere the minoxidil gets, I swear hair is going to grow there. Now have a line, like I said, from my eyebrow to my hair that just grows and I have to shave it pretty much once a week. That being said, this is a pretty good problem to have considering the fact that hair loss was the issue I started with. That's going to take me to step four, which is a step that I haven't even reached. 
But a lot of you, if your hair loss is bad enough, are going to have to do this. So there's a product called finasteride, which is basically either a pill or a foam solution you can apply to your scalp. What finasteride does is it completely stops hair loss. Now, this isn't 100% effective for everyone, but if it does work for you, it like basically completely negates any hair loss whatsoever. Finasteride works by blocking this hormone called DHT. And DHT is one of the hormones that people think is responsible for shrinking your hair follicles. That being said, DHT is only susceptible to certain people. It's actually a type of testosterone testosterone so it's not a bad thing to have in your body basically what this means is someone could have extremely high dht and not really be affected by it at all and other people could have like medium high dht and be completely bald because of it at least that's what recent studies show but it's not 100 proven what is proven though is that finasteride works regardless of if that's the reason why there's a couple reasons that i never did this and i probably never would firstly i already regained my hair using the other steps i gave you in this video so there was not really any need for me now the reason i probably never would is because it has horrible effects to your hormones just to list some of the bad side effects that i have pulled up right here there is mood swings so basically it could give you depression if it doesn't work out for you decreased libido aka erectile dysfunction your performance in the gym obviously lower testosterone because it's decreasing dht which is a form of testosterone lack of energy worse sleep like it, it's genuinely horrible for you if you do use finasteride what i recommend is using a topical version which basically means instead of swallowing a pill you're applying a foam by applying foam to your scalp it's going to have much less of a bad effect on you yeah this is like actually crazy like do not use this if you don't have to for step five we move to a step that people don't really think about at all these are things you can do for free that will actually help you prevent your hair loss one of the main factors for hair loss is actually stress so you need to decrease your stress in some ways good ways to do this is by increasing your sleep making sure you're breathing properly making sure you're subscribed and you watch all of my videos i'm just kidding but like actually exercise the list goes on you can look up ways to decrease your stress people don't realize how much that actually affects your hair loss another thing that can really help you and definitely helped me is not touching your hair too much if you don't know this i actually get a perm which seems like it would be horrible for your hair it definitely isn't good but it's not as bad as people think besides the point my hair i actually feel looks good most of the time so i'm not touching it too much when my hair was straight i hated the way it looked so i would just be non-stop touching it which definitely contributed to my hair loss and for step six, I'm just going to bust some myths. Number one, wearing a hat is not going to cause hair loss. Unless that hat is directly pulling on your hair, stressing your scalp. So as long as you're not pulling your hair, you should be fine. Number two, using too much shampoo is not going to make you get bold. With that being said, using a low quality shampoo could have the opposite effect. If you're using two in one old spice, like I think this has actually been proven to cause balding at points. Don't quote me on that, but there also have been shampoos uh, proven to cause hair loss regardless. You shouldn't be shampooing every day anyway. You should only do it like probably four four days a week max unless you have excessively oily hair myth number three is that shaving your hair is going to make it grow back thicker just think about how that would make any sense it's just not true at all when you cut your hair all you're affecting is your hair that doesn't affect your scalp so if shaving your head is not touching your scalp at all it has no difference or no effect on your hair growth with all this being said making your hair look good is only the first step to self-improvement so many more things to prove like your finances your face your body and your mindset which is why i recommend watching this video right here where i teach you how to get a better looking face Peace.